introduction to General Dahl. Major General Dahl has served with the 3rd Infantry Division in Germany, the 2nd Infantry Division in Korea, the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, the 25th Infantry Division in Hawaii, and the 10th Mountain Dis Division at Fort Drum, New York. What a distinguished career. From 2010 to 2012, General Dahl was the Deputy Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division and Deputy Commander of Regional Command South Afghanistan. He then served as the United States Force Afghanistan Deputy Commanding General and Commander, United States National Support Element. Now, his awards and decorations include the Defense Superior Service Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the, De the Legion of Merit, uh, the Defense Meritorial Service Medal and the Meritorial Service Medal for, with four Oak Leaf Clusters, Joint Service Commendation Medal, Army Commendation Medal, two Oak Leaf Clusters, Army Achievement Medal, four Oak Leaf Clusters, Combat Action Badge, Air Assault Badge, Senior Parachutist Badge, and Ranger Tab. General Dahl is currently serving as Deputy Commander of the First Corps Joint Base Lewis and McCord, Washington. It's now my privilege to introduce to you Major General Kenneth Dahl. Please stand. Please have a seat, thanks. Um, before we go any further at all, I want to uh, ask you to join me in a round of applause. That was one of the most uh, dignified and uh, beautiful renditions of the National Anthem I've heard in a long time. So Jacqueline, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for the generous introduction. I don't know how distinguished my, my career is. I, I thought that I had done a few things until I entered this room and joined this audience, and now I'm not feeling quite so distinguished as I used to, but uh, this is a very distinguished crowd, and we're honored to be here. Um, we're, we're here to honor Major Swenson and to present him with a long overdue Bronze Star. Uh, and I wish I had spoken before he did, because it's very, very difficult to follow that, uh, and the earlier presentations as well, but I'll just make a couple of uh, brief remarks before we get on with the presentation itself. I want to thank a few folks. First of all, uh, I'm not very familiar with Trigger Time, but I want to thank Trigger Time because what I've learned about what your organization is about and what you do is terribly important. Continuing uh, to recognize uh, the service and the contributions of those who have gone before, those of us who are currently serving, and that's remarkably important for us to not forget uh, and to continue to build on, on uh, those successes and to never uh, forget those. So thank you for that. Also to the uh, National World War II Glider Pilots Association, in particular you, uh, Colonel Thies, for, for all of your efforts in holding conventions like this, giving the presentations and bringing all of that back to life. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. Um, it takes a lot of personal commitment to do that. And, and it's very, very important to us. So thank you. Uh, and then I want to also recognize uh, Patricia uh, o uh, Overman, uh, because uh, Patricia, it's very, very touching what you have done. And you represent really a, a lot of people who uh, frankly are from my generation, you know, who are digging into those old boxes in the attic and discovering things uh, about our parents and bringing that back to life. And, and what you've done to create the energy and the leadership behind you know, this presentation that we're going to do here is, is frankly very remarkable. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> now Patricia points out this may be the last award of this type presented to a World War II veteran, you know, at least in the Washington area. Uh, so it is truly an honor for me to have an opportunity to be here with you uh, and participate in that. I um, also want to recognize, along with uh, Major Swenson, 
his wife Betsy is here, uh, son Eric, uh, Robin, his daughter Robin, and then other members of the family as well, some of the grandchildren. Uh, it's wonderful that you can be here oftentimes. Frankly, if you had Sir, if you had been given this award, you know, right after your action, your family wouldn't have been there to participate in it. So, <laughs> so it's taken a long time to get here, but it's really wonderful that some of you have traveled from Nebraska and other places to, to be here to honor him uh, in person. Now, following the events of uh, Burke Gun Corner and the end of World War II, then Flight Officer Swenson uh, separated from the service, but was recalled uh, in the reserves for service during the Korean War and remained on, in the reserves as a materiel officer with the 15th Weather Squadron, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Okinawa. Uh, he retired after 23 years. Uh, that was in 1982, which as a point of record was the day, year that I was commissioned into the Army. So a little bit of time has passed since then. Uh, you're often referred to uh, as the greatest generation. Uh, and I don't think there's any dispute about that, uh, but there is also an argument to be made that the current people serving are the new greatest generation. And I think there's a case to be made for that. But I think the important point is to take a look at the continuity between one generation to the next and to the next, and what's consistent and what's enduring in that. And what is consistent and enduring in, in that are the traditions and the American values uh, that under uh, gird and provide the foundation, the essential foundation, you know, that still sprang from the World War II generation, but uninter uninterrupted continues uh, in today's force. And as you know, today's force is very different than all volunteer force. My point to you is that your contributions uh, and your service are still having a very dramatic and important impact on those of us who are serving today. So thank you for that. <clears throat> for sure, today's force is different. Uh, as an all-volunteer force, we've got the best equipment, we've got the best technology, uh, we have the best training available. Uh, we've had 10 solid years of combat in two different theaters. We've got a lot of combat experience at the moment. And I'm absolutely certain that the United States is currently being served by uh, the greatest fighting force of all of our services uh, to combined that, that's ever been fielded. I just want to give you an example uh, that you might, those of you who are paratroopers out there um, and, and glider pilots may appreciate, uh, but I just returned from Australia where we conducted a two-week exercise with our Australian counterparts and the Marines out uh, in, uh, it was called Talisman Sabre, and we do it every couple of years. But one of the things that we uh, uh, had in the part of this operation was an airborne operation and this airborne operation, we took 450 paratroopers from Alaska. Uh, they loaded up on five C-17s, which is the big ones you see coming in out of McCord Field here all the time. And they flew nonstop from Alaska to Australia, 18 hours of flight time. Uh, when they boarded the plane, they did not have their parachutes on. Uh, about halfway, when they were passing over Hawaii, you know, a couple of tanker aircraft departed from California, intercepted them, gave them some more fuel because they wouldn't have been able to make the trip without it. Uh, shortly after that, the soldiers took their seatbelts off, put on their parachutes, donned the rest of their equipment, and 18 hours later landed, uh, 450 of them onto a drop zone in Australia. There was one injury, which is remarkable for an exercise like that. You're usually expecting, frankly, five to 10%, you know, even on a, a peacetime training jump. So to have only one was really remarkable. Uh, not only for the officers, but also non-commissioned officers who are responsible for that. Uh, they did uh, also send out a couple of mortars. There wasn't a lot of heavy drops. We didn't have any gliders. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, but the first things to go out the doors and parachutes were some of their mortars. Uh, and that is an important exercise, training exercise, to highlight because there are some skeptics out there who think we've been so busy in Iraq and Afghanistan that we're not able to do things in the Pacific, and nothing could be further from the truth. That's just a small example. There aren't a lot of nations in the world, in fact, there may not be another nation in the world who could pull that off. Uh, but we've still maintained that capability, and those are unique capabilities uh, similar to, to what we saw in some of these slide presentations. Uh, at the same time, we also the Marines also conducted a, an amphibious landing. And our Marines have been busy also for the last 10 years or so, and there haven't been a lot of amphibious landings. But they put 1,500 Marines ashore uh, in a couple of hours in the early morning off of uh, one of the USS Bonhomme Richard. You know, these are demonstrations of the U.S. commitment in the Pacific. Uh, 
our experience there was a demonstration of the Army's commitment to it. And the First Corps headquarters, which is down here at Joint Base Lewis McCord, which is right here in the, ba in the backyard of Seattle and Tacoma, uh, has a very big responsibility. And I, I just thought it was worth pointing that out to you. Uh, we would not be able to do those kinds of things if we weren't building on your legacy, frankly. So these are uniquely American capabilities, born of that same commitment that you had, uh, simply to diligence and perseverance to j simply get the job done. Uh, and that was the same that was demonstrated at uh, Burp Gun Corner by the 435th uh, in March 1945. One final point about today's Army that I'd like to point out to you, and that highlights the high standards that we have that, again, we, we carry forward you know, from your service. You set them very high. We have to maintain them very high. Uh, what that means is uh, just an interesting t statistic that I'll share with you. Of the 17 to 24-year-olds in the United States, uh, only 24% of those uh, can join the, the military service today, 24%. 76% of the 17 and 24-year-olds are ineligible to join a military service because the standards for enlistment are so high with regards to physical activity, graduating from high school, clean record, a clean health record, et cetera. Um, so what that means is that those serving are the very best of our youth. Uh, we have not adjusted our standard, but we're finding ourselves recruiting from an increasingly smaller population uh, because of that. But you can be uh, confident uh, and proud that those who are serving in uniform are holding the standards that you uh, established yourselves when you were in uniforms yourselves. Despite the technology and the equipment, in the end, uh, it is always the people. It's not the equipment. <clears throat> and that's what makes us successful. It is ceremonies and conventions like this one here uh, that help us to uh, remind us of that fact and to appreciate that. And as was mentioned earlier, the company commander of the 435th at the time, uh, then Captain Gordon, later Major Charles Gordon, reminds us of the humility uh, that's necessary for good leadership and the esprit de corps that's necessary for very high performing successful units. And that he refused to accept his own silver star until every member uh, who was deserving of the bronze star uh, received theirs. And frankly, uh, you picked up the guide on Patricia Overman and carried that forward for him, so good on you. Uh, so today, uh, we're gonna follow through on that commitment. We're gonna recognize Major Bob Swenson. Uh, we shine the spotlight on Major Swenson, who just turned 90 years old uh, a month ago today. Uh, he is one of, I believe, uh, 12 surviving members of the original 289 glider pilots uh, of the 435th. Uh, so with that, sir, if you would come up and join me, we're going to go ahead and uh, present your award. Well, you're going to read the citation? You're going to read the citation? You will? Okay. Okay. If I could ask you to please stand. Attention to orders. Special Order General 337, dated 27 September 95. By direction of the President, the following personnel are awarded the Bronze Star Medal for meritorious service in action, achievement in action during the period of 24 March 1945 to 25 March 1945, near Wesel, Germany, while assigned to the Provisional Glider Pilot Company, 6th Squad, 2nd Platoon, 76th Troop Carrier Squadron, 43rd Troop Carrier Group, while attached to the 194th Glider Infantry Regiment. And I'll just skip down to Flight Officer R.S. Svensson, T-132, 195 by order of the Secretary of the Air Force.